In this video, we're going to deal with the difference between a scalar quantity and a vector quantity. A scalar quantity is anything that just deals with any number plus its units. For example, 30 cubic meter, 11 seconds. These are examples of scalar quantities because it just deals with the magnitude of the measurement and its units, which is cubic meter and seconds. So this is for volume. This is a measurement for volume. And this is obviously a measurement for time. If you say 30 cubic meters, 30 just means that we have 30 cubic meters for volume. And for time, it's just 11 seconds. That's just basically it. Remember, scalar is just simply any number or the magnitude plus its units. A vector quantity, on the other hand, is anything that deals with the number, its units, and most importantly, its direction. So don't ever forget this. Vector is number plus units. I got the spelling wrong, but it's units plus direction. So the only thing or the only difference of the two is that scalar doesn't have direction. This is directionless. And vector has direction. I'm going to represent direction by an arrow. So it has direction. So I'm going to give you units or measurement and tell me where it falls to. Is it scalar or vector? What about 30 kilometers per hour? Do you think it's a scalar or a vector? Well, for one, it doesn't have any direction. A requirement for vector is that it should have direction. If it doesn't have any direction, or if it doesn't involve any direction, then it automatically falls on a scalar quantity. So 30 kilometers per hour is a scalar quantity. But if we say 30 kilometers per hour due east, it means that a car is actually traveling 30 kilometers per hour to the direction of east. It has direction, it has number, and it has units, therefore it falls on the category of a vector. So that's just the two main difference between a scalar and a vector quantity. Scalar is directionless, vector has direction. By the way, this would also give you the difference between speed and velocity. This is speed, for all we know. 30 kilometers per hour. Kilometers per hour is a unit for speed. But if you put direction on a speed, it actually becomes what you call velocity. So the difference between speed and velocity is that speed is a scalar quantity. And velocity, because it involves direction, which is east, west, north, or south, whatever direction that is, it becomes velocity. So that's the main difference between the two. What about force? The unit for force is Newton. Newton, or force, falls under a vector quantity. Why? A force is anything that is a push or pull. So if you're pushing a car, you can push it either to the right or left, up or down. So that involves direction to a force. Therefore, force or Newton is a vector. 
Another example for scalar are distance. When you say 50 meters, that's distance. It doesn't tell you which direction it goes. It just gives you the magnitude and the unit. So distance is a scalar quantity. But if you put direction on a distance, for example, 50 kilometers northeast, it means you're traveling 50 kilometers north of east, then this makes it, guess what, a displacement. So that's the major difference between a distance and displacement. Displacement involves direction apart from the unit of length and the magnitude, but distance just deals with 50 meters, the unit and the number. Now, the other thing that you need to know is the different ways on how to represent vectors. One way of representing a vector is say, I have a vector of 200 newtons. Remember force, all kinds of force is a vector. And it's directed at, let's say, 30 degrees. The way you write it is you write a Cartesian plane. Of course, this is the y-axis and the x-axis. So 30 degrees represents the angle of your force relative to the x-axis. And I'll write this as an arrow. All vectors are actually represented by an arrow because it involves a direction. So it's going to look a little something like this. So this is 200 newtons of force, 30 degrees relative to the x-axis. So that's one way on how to represent a vector. This is representing it graphically. Now, the second way of representing a vector is by its components. I'll rewrite this vector. Say I have 200 newtons of force, 30 degrees relative to the x-axis, so it's the horizontal. This vector actually has its x and y components. So I'll write it as f of x and f of y. This means the force and its x component and the force and its y component. So if this is the vector, this is its x component. And this is its y component. So this is f of x and then f of y. So you can represent this vector as, let's make another example. I'm going to pick a different color. This time I'll pick green. And let's see if it works. Uh, so for example, if I have a vector with a component of 30 newtons, and 20 newtons. So this is the f of x and the f of y. So if we draw this graphically, that means this is 30 newtons and this is 20 newtons. So 30 is much lengthier than 20. And the line in which the tail of the first vector mix with the head of the second vector is actually our resultant force. So this is f of y and f of x, and this is the actual vector. Now, if I have f of x as negative 10 newtons, and my f of y, or my y component for the force, is 10 newtons. How do I graph it? Let's write 
a plane here. Since negative f of x is negative 10, then we would write it on the left or to the left. Since this is the negative x-axis and this is the positive x-axis. Since it's negative, we're going to write the line here or the x component here. And f of y is positive, so it should be up. So this is negative y. If your y was negative, you would bring it down. You would write your y component downwards or to the south, but since it's positive 10, you write it up to the positive y-axis. And again, the line that the tail of your first vector makes with the head of your second vector is your actual force. And this is your f of x, I mean f of y, and this is your f of x. So it lies on the second quadrant. This is the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and the fourth quadrant. Let's try another example. Say I have a plane here, and the angle of my vector is 225 degrees. For which quadrant does my vector lie? Is it on the first quadrant, the second, third, or fourth quadrant? So this line right here is zero. This is zero degrees. It basically means there's no angle made yet. Once it gets here on the positive y-axis, this is 90 degrees. So the first quadrant makes a 90 degree angle. This is 90 degrees. On the second quadrant, it makes a full 180 degrees relative to the x positive x-axis. So from here to here, one straight line, that's 180 degrees. And if we add another 90 degrees here, 180 plus 90 is 270. So that would make it 270. And if you make a full rotation, that's going to make it 360. One circle is 360. So if your angle is, or if your vector is at 225, that means it's somewhere here. So this is where your force lies, or your vector lies, at the third quadrant. So let's make a quick review. If you have a force, or any vector, that means you also have its x component, or f of x, and its y component, or f of y. If you're given the components and you're looking for the actual force, notice that f of x and f of y are perpendicular to each other. And the force creates a hypotenuse. So if you have the f of x and f of y, you can get the f using the Pythagorean formula, which is f is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the two side, the other two sides. If you also have the force and you know the angle that the vector or the force creates relative to the x-axis, you can find the f of y or the y component using this formula. f of y is equal to f or the force, the value of the force, sine theta, or sine of the angle. And if you want to know f of x, you can use the formula, the value of f, or the force, times cosine theta. And you don't have to worry because you can get the sine of the angle using your calculators. Also, if you want to get the angle, because you're given the, the y component and the x component, 
you can use this formula. The angle is given by the arc tangent or the inverse tangent of f of y over f of x. These are the, the formulas. These four formulas are the most important ones that you can use in the future once we start adding vectors.